Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This time around, we've got a 1984 Matchbox Jaguar XK120. So I don't quite know where this Jaguar has come from. When I say I don't quite know where it's come from, I've got a big project list of cars that I aim to do, I want to do. This was never on the radar. I was rummaging through the box and this car leapt out at me and I thought, this is quite interesting. I can't remember when I had this. It's from 1984, so I would have been about nine at the time, but I can't honestly remember playing with it. Typical, the windscreen snapped off the top of it, so I can only assume it's been sat at the pile underneath all these other cars all these years hasn't got lots of chips of paint in it so i don't think it's been rummaged around quite a lot it's just been buried under all underneath them all so look quite interesting i thought yeah okay i can do something with this one so it seems to have jumped right to the top of the project pile now i've done uh, videos before on removing the bodies and removing paint and whatnot so down in the description somewhere, there will be a little link on how to remove these. So I won't bore you too much without to, to take that off. So I'll quickly look at what it's like once I've stripped it all down of its parts. As I said, the body is really good. I've already drilled and tapped the holes ready to when I put it back together at the end. The interior is pretty good. No chips or dirt or dust or anything in it really. So that's quite a bonus it looks okay i'll do something and tart that up quite nicely at the end nothing much more on that one chassis is a nice metal chassis as typical of these older matchbox ones can be a bit of a pain to remove the wheels but i'm not planning on saving them so i can just hack the axles out of that but other than that it's really good condition and then this front bumper and grill matrix at the front quite basic there's a little bit of flash from the sprue where it would have been molded but i can cut that off later on it feeds through the front grill area nice little assembly so i'll put that on at the end and then all that's remember uh, remaining of the glass is these little uh, bits that were left inside so they're not going to give us any use so as i said down in the description there is links to how i've removed the paint and tap the bodies and drill the bodies off and all the rest of it so i won't bore you too much with that but typically it takes about an hour just to remove this paint nothing special about what i'm using at all and i'll put a link of the products that i use to do that and again with tapping i've got a little link further down on the tools that i use so with all that said, then underneath we have a really good unbattered XK120 body. And the first thing on my to-do list on this is just to remove or drill out the lights because it's got nice little apertures I think I can make of them and put some real looking lights into there. So I'll start just by doing a little impression or just doing a little center dot not that it's going to help too much because it's that fine um, where on the casting there's some little well they're like little triangle star pieces i guess mimicking the real headlights the drill bit is going to skip a little bit so it's just trying to give me a aid me a little bit along the way but all i wanted to do is just sort of give it a bit of a help yeah as you can see the drill's skipping a little bit but it hasn't got to be dead center i just want to get it going a bit so I can open it up and file it out in a short while but just trying to be a little bit careful because they are a pain when you have these really thin one one and a half millimeter drills if they snap off inside they can be a bit of a pain to get out but I've just about managed it on this one which is not too much of a drama but just use the next couple of drill bit size up just to open it up a little bit more so I can get this file in and just finish off the job a little bit better and we'll have something that looks a little bit like this which is the start of this little modification of this 
XK120. I'll put some styrene on the back of it just to fill them in, paint them up and whatnot. But I've got a little trick I want to use just to make the lenses, which I'll get onto later on after we've painted it. So with this front assembly area, there's not much to do on this other than just to clean it up a little bit. And I'm just going to use the end of the scalpel blade just to go in and out of the fins slightly just to get some of the muck out of it and some of the chewed up bits of plastic where it has been sat in this box for all these years and it's all that's needed really a lick of paint at the end of the video just to spruce it up a little bit and it all should be fine but just quickly remove these little flash bits that are mentioned earlier on from when it was molded obviously when the mass producing these I haven't got time to sit there all day and do these little fine things they're only a little pound toy at the end of the day so there's going to be a little bit of muck here and there left on them from manufacturing I want to get to make my own little screens for this I'm going to do a little double windscreen little fly screens like the race cars because as always I try to do these as little race cars because that's my main interest in uh, automobiles at the end of the day so motor racing so i'm just going to fill in where this old plastic windscreen assembly would have come out of i'm needing some of this squadron models green putty again and all i'm going to do is just I've put a bit of masking tape already behind it and then just fill it in and leave it to dry and it's just a bit like grouting some tiles really just push it in as best you can doesn't matter how rough it looks because you will get to sand it once it's dried and it does dry pretty quick but the good thing now now it has dried is you can remove this tape otherwise it would have just oozed out the bottom but the good thing now is once we sand it down we can see how good or how bad it's come out and i'm just going to use these again from squadron models these little files these little sanding boards and it sounds really easy this green putty it's not hard at all you have to do it really lightly but we can see now once we give it a little bit of a dusting off some little areas where it hasn't quite filled in it's no big drama again it's sometimes you can never get it right first time or get it completely filled first time it's probably more to do with the putty being getting a bit older now it's getting drying too easy but i can see them areas and i can re-go over them but i won't repeat that process but you get the drift of where i'm going with that so what I am going to do now is I want to make some grills little intake grills on the side of the car or vents whatever you want to call them and then I'm simply gonna use some masking tape just to outline the bits where I want to cut it and I always use this little Tamiya masking tape it comes in all different widths really good for painting I know some other people don't quite like it and they don't get good results I think it's great and I highly recommend it but with it being so thin I'm just going to use it now just as you can see to mark out where I want to make this vent or grill just like when I do the posts or I'm sorry like when I've just done the headlight even I'm just going to drill four little holes in each corner it hasn't got to be absolutely spot on but just enough so I can get a little jeweler's hacksaw in there just to cut it out and as I say it hasn't got to be perfect it's just enough for me to get in and, and cut it and if you've never used one of these before you can get them cheap on eBay Amazon model shops anywhere like that they're called jewelers hacksaws jewelers blades the blades themselves they can get them in all sorts of different they come in tooths 
so 400 tooth quite fine 20 is quite coarse so on and so on so if you get an 80 or 100 it's really really fine so straightforward enough to, to fit in if you've never used one of these before they sort of clamp in the blades do then you can adjust the handle fore and aft just to give it a bit of tension I tend not to do it too tight because these things tend to snap very very easily if you've never used one before just have a look where you're going at the back like I'm showing you now because we've all done it we've started to cut away and before you know it you're cutting the other side of the body or you're cutting the post you're cutting something you shouldn't be doing so just take your time when these things snap they do make you jump quite a bit so it's worth just taking your time and letting the tool do the job by just doing it slowly and not as much pressure as being bullfisted and uh, excited as we all get when we're making these cars but once you've cut that hole out again using these little model files just get in there and tidy it all up and open it out a little bit more to get the desired effect and once I've removed this tape and it will need a little bit of fettling up a little bit from the burrs on the outside but overall the shape is absolutely spot on of what I wanted it to look like so fairly straightforward simple to do and for the vents themselves on the back I'm going to use a little bit of styrene again as I, I don't think any car ever misses me not doing any styrene so it's going to appear on there at some point but this is all I'm going to do um, well actually no it's not all I'm going to do because I'm going to do the windscreens as well out of styrene but what I'm going to do is quite minimal on this car and simply glue in place some little mounting board plate section on the inside and then with thinner pieces and thinner square section just create these little fins behind it and I'll just bond that together with a bit of mac again I'll put the link to the materials I'm using in the description just to help you along but we'll get something along the lines of that. So I did try putting some mesh behind it and some fine wire. Didn't really have the effect that I wanted it to do. So I wanted it to be a little bit beefy. I used to have a little MG Midget race car and that had some rather DIY type cuts in the side of the car with these big vents. And it looked kind of cool. So that's what sort of sprung the idea on me on this one. But it'll look better once we've primed it up later on so it'll all start to come together later now with this race car they obviously wanted a bit of protection a little roll hoop at the back and they tended to be on one side to protect the driver although this is going to be a two-seater and i'm using a fuse just to bend over this little bit of floral wire which is really easy and conforms and bends really really straightforward easy to cut which I'm about to show you snips off really easy doesn't fling off at a million miles an hour and bounces all over the place and you don't know where it's gone so it's kind of soft well it is soft it's not kind of soft it is soft and I'm just going to mark out where I want to drill into this and I won't bore you again with another drilling shot because I've done a couple now so what I'm going to do is just do a couple of pilot holes and drill this body but what I essentially I'm aiming to do is to put the hoop straight behind the driver and then a little mounting bar at an angle like so sort of 45 degrees ish going in as support and just to get that nice clean cut I've just cut this bar out 45 degrees as well so it's going to sit nice and flush once we put it together but all I've done as I say 
without boring you, just quickly do some of these pilot holes the same size. And I did think of soldering this, or tell a lie, I attempted to solder this and it didn't get the, the effect that I wanted. When I've done these roll bars in the past, it gets a nice little meaty bit of solder in between the joints and it looks pretty good. You have to file it a little bit, but it looks fairly good. On this, I think it didn't look quite right. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing this one in place. And by using sort of a thicker viscosity, sounds kind of posh, doesn't it? Viscosity of glue, it'll, it's enough to hold it in place just whilst I get some of the activator spray on in time. Which, if I flip it over now, spray a bit of this stuff on. It'll flash it off and stick it pretty much instantly. And it's good. It's left it in place. So it's made it nice and flush where the two bars meet each other. And it doesn't look kind of messy with all solder and everything around it. It's made it quite a solid little feature, actually. So it's turned out quite good. I'm rather happy with that. It looks okay. So on now to just giving it a bit of a primer base ready for the main coat in a minute. And I will use a rattle can for the main paint, but all those airbrush fans, don't worry, I will crack the airbrush out as well later on. I've mentioned it many times before. If I've got the color already in a can, I'll use the can rather than mess about and paint it all up. But as with all of them, I do like to primer the cars first so I can see any a little anomalies or anything left in it and we can see just on the side there of the bonnet at the top near the windscreen on the other side there was a little bit of a bit of a mess here you go there you go there just where a bit more of that putty was left over so that's the reason why I like to paint it as well not just because the paint sticks to the primer better but you can see any of the anomalies and any of the workmanship that I've done so before I get on to paint that, I'm just going to make these tiny little screens now. And I've drawn on a bit of tracing paper the section that I want to do. And I've just scored the shape very briefly into the plastic. And then I'll cut it out, cut it down to size. And every time, I, every time I do these videos, I get fiddlier and fiddlier. And I sometimes think, why am I getting this fiddly at times? Because it does make these videos drag on a little bit. Adding these little bits of detail. But the overall finish does look how I intended them to look. They just take the time and they just get rather fiddly. So whilst I do digress a little bit away from restoring the actual die cast and adding a little bit along the way but little L section of styrene to mount this plastic section to and I'm just cutting a little slither off one of the sides just to angle it a little bit rather than have the windscreen coming into a 45 degree break because it wouldn't look kind of accurate they did stick up a little bit more sort of 70 80 degree if you like on the car so a small little piece of the the mech the little bonding agent just to put them two together and this is where it gets really fiddly because sometimes you can take two or three goes at them and still make a mess of it at the end of it but if you take your time you'll get a nice little looking screen like that sort of five mil width five mil height but you get the overall picture now of where we're going with this little race car so i'll give it a quick coat now i'm going to use a nato green give it a bit of a dusting off 
first of all. But it was always going to be a classic racing green I was going to do in this car. I did think about making it cream again originally, but it's actually come out a rather satin look, and I, and I kind of like this look. I'm woman and ahhing whether to make it shiny or not, but to match the interior, this little lip around the cockpit area, I'm just going to mask off and then colour this the same brown interior colour I'm going to feature on the inside of it. And I'm just going to use this masking tape again from Tammy and basically mummify it and just leave the exposed area and the compressor and airbrush I use as a badger set up. I'll just put a little, little adapter onto the Tamiya XF paints that I use as well so it fits kind of nice. I haven't got to mix them all up and put them in a different hopper. It goes straight on. More often than not you have to add a little bit of thinners into these XF acry um, ac acrylic. Yeah, XF acrylic pots, but they do go on rather nicely. And again, a couple of light coats just to get you going before you do any thicker, heavier coats. Before I then go on to this cockpit area. And the good thing about using these airbrushes when you can be bothered, or when I can be bothered, is it is rather quick drying because you're only doing it in light phases. So it does tend to dry off rather quickly, so there's not a lot of standing around to do. But the moment of truth, how good your masking has been, is now in the proof when you're pulling it apart. And more often than not, there's always a little bit you've missed and it's gone to the body. Or at least I do. But at the moment, this is looking promising and... I think for once I managed to have masked it all off pretty good this time. There's another little product I sometimes use as well. Um, it's like a masking paint and I'll get onto that on another video and show you that. You can put it on and cut it away but for doing more intricate things. So I'll show you that on another video but I'll quickly go around and add a little bit of painting detail now on this roll bar. Again on some of the metal features of the car, the overriders, indicator bits, license plate, number plates around. And then again on the interior, I'll finish it off with actually a metallic red. And it's come out, it's, it's actually more like an orangey bronze color, although it's classed as a metallic red, just to give it that wood effect. And it's giving like a more of a veneer effect. But then on the seat, I'm going to use this Humbrol gloss coat. Because I want to keep the same colour for the seats as the interior. But still fetch it out so it's more leathery. Well, not vinyl. It would have all been leather back then. More of a leather look. And just by going over it, it brings it up quite nicely. So onto these headlights then. I'm going to just get this file out and just take the paint off the front to get it right back to metal so we've got a proper metal surround and all I want to achieve rather than paint it I think because it's got a nice flat surface by doing this I'll just finish off them headlight surrounds pretty good but I'll finish the lights off at the end when I've painted it by adding the top coat But before I get to that top coat, because I am going to make it glossy now, is I'm just going to add a couple of race numbers. And this is what I do when I'm doing the white decals. I'll just do a flat white base. And I've done it a few times with text before, but you, 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 I am cutting it out with a scalpel, basically. I'll do a little black outline on the printer and then I'll cut it out. A little bit fiddly, but this one's nice and easy with it being a circle. I've just used a compass just to cut the circle out. So I'll do that as a white basic decal. Stick it down, 
print off my black decal on transparent, stick it over the top and not rocket science, but hey presto, we've got a, a white backed sort of accurate decal. So there's my number, the 75 number. I'll seal it all in now with this Zero Paints 2-pack gloss clear coat. Really good if you've never used it. I've used it on the 124 scale cars, but it comes up really wet looking, really shiny. So really good product. It's just I very rarely use it on this scale only because once you mix it, you've got to have a good lot of cars lined up so you're not going to waste it all essentially but it's a hundred parts of the main clear coat mixed in with a bit of the hardener and then i think 25 percent harder and then 10 percent to 30 percent of the thinners so once you've done it you've got to be committed to what else you're going to spray otherwise you're just going to waste it so that being said it is a really good product and it comes up nice and shiny which i'll leave to the end to show you so quickly do a couple more details all the way around one of them being a little rear view mirror which will sit in the center of the car they didn't have rear view mirrors or wing mirrors at the side they had just the center dash mounted rear view mirror which i'm gonna make out of this styrene stuff and when you're doing it this fine it is best to leave it to dry i know it bonds and sticks more or less instantly but when it's this fine i tend to leave it for quite a little bit so whilst i'm letting it dry i'll quickly go back on to these headlights and again styrene based just to make these little back plates just to put at the back of the lines and then all I will do is fill it with paint and even if you made a little bit of not holes but you haven't made it quite butt up quite as nice putting a big dab of thick paint down there will fill in them gaps so it will look good once you've finished it and then my little idea of using this clear fix is to make its own little headlight lenses and rather daftly my hand got in the way here but what I'm essentially doing is putting it on the aperture of it and if you drag the little matchstick across or cocktail stick across with the clear fix glue on it makes a little fine headlight which I'll show you more in the end, but even still, I'll probably do a proper video and show you again of me doing it, not put my stupid hand in the way. So I do apologize about that, but you will see the after effect at the end. So quickly onto the wheels. I'll show you the wheels at the end. I don't want to spoil the wheel look at the moment. And all I've done is made my own little axles, which I've done before out of paper clips bit of solder on the end and then file them to shape. You can file them as big or as small as you want. And then you'll have a nice little set of axles custom made to fit like so. So you can make them as tight or as baggy looking as you want still roll quite nice as well i got a small glimpse there of the wheel itself and then the final little detail piece is a little belt across the bonnet which i'm going to use an old bike in a tube i know technically they're made of leather but this actually once you've cut it and given it a good wash as well all the powder inside these things I don't quite know what it is. It's like a tacky powder if that's such a thing. It's weird. So give it a good wash and a good clean after you've cut it to shape. But all I'm doing is making a fine little slither to replicate the little belt across the front of the bonnet. And I'll drill some very fine little holes into it as well just to mimic where the hole on the belt would be. If it was real 
and all I'm going to mount it to the core with is some double sided tape. Sticks really good. You can maneuver it around. It's sticky as hell, but other than that, all I'm going to do is stick it on. And the funny thing is, when you're filming these and shooting them for Instagram and what have you, I think it's just the perspective of the whole overall things that I'm putting to these cars because it does look kind of thick it does look kind of out of scale a bit but when you're looking at it for real and you've got it in the palm of your hand it looks really accurate so I don't know if it's the, the perspective or the closeness I'm doing this with these lenses on the cameras but it does look a little bit big out of scale when I'm now watching this back but hey ho here we go just literally sticking it down like that and then a little final Pierre de Resistance is a little buckle which I'm just gonna cut out of styrene Obviously, I'll paint it silver and then I'll put them holes into the, the little belt at the front, but it'll sit somewhere on the front, sort of like this. Well, if I can get it to stay on, but that's the sort of look. I'll get a better angle than that as well, because that does look a little bit, bit huge and I'll probably trim it down a little bit as well. So overall, that is more or less a finished car where I'm going to go so let's just quickly remind ourselves of my t-shirts if you want a quick look on my t-mail store now we'll quickly remind ourselves got to get that advertising in haven't I here is what the car originally looked like jumped out of the project box wasn't intending to do this one but here is the original matchbox xk120 now here is my take on a rather swish looking race car there's a few things i could have added along the way or other things that have suddenly sprung to mind and funnily enough i always look at the history of these cars on matchbox and the original number plate on it which was nub 120 is actually a jaguar xk registered on my son's birthday in 1950 although he's not that old obviously but it is actually a Jaguar XK120. It's actually due for an MOT next month as well, funnily enough. So, or actually next week, now I've looked at it, next year, 2019, March, November the 6th. So, yeah, that is actually a real car, real Jaguar XK. So, here's my version of it. These wheels are two piece wheels from Turbo Sheep Customs. I'll put his name and link in the description again. There's the little vents, the roll bar, the little brace or belt on the front, should I say. The new little windscreens, rear view mirror. There's them headlights that I've made. And I'll do a proper video on that as well. I do apologize. I should actually have made a little tonneau cover for this, just covering up the passenger seat. But again, I can always put that on something else so I'm rather happy with this it's got that metal roll bar which is rather good actually it is rather sturdy so you can give it a good banging around and it will do its job nice little vents in the side there I've put my number plates on it SK 1975 on the front and rear overall I'm rather pleased again with this this one I'll resume back to my more modern day cars or newer rally cars, race cars, but for something a little bit different, I thought this time around, why not go a little bit vintage? So I do hope you like my little take on this. And I'll just quickly finish by trying to show you a bit of the interior detail and sort of the replica wood, even though it is classed as a metallic -y red it is kind of a bronze color but try to give the wood leather material effect so 
overall happy with it i hope you all enjoyed it i do appreciate you watching my videos and liking them please continue if you haven't subscribed to subscribe to me for all my latest videos as always thanks for watching until next time all the very best <laughs>